Welcome to this wonderful place and on this beautiful evening. Tonight, I would like to share with you an idea that I'm extremely passionate about. Think about this. <laughs> Throughout all human history, the way that we have expressed our intent, the way we have expressed our goals, the way we have expressed our desires has been limited by our bodies. We are born into this world with this, whatever nature or luck has given us. Now, we've had a lot of interesting tools over the years, but fundamentally, the way that we work with those tools is through our bodies. Now, here's a situation that I know all of you know very well, your frustration with your smartphones, right? This is another tool, right? And we are still communicating with these tools through our bodies. And I would claim to you that these tools are not so smart. And maybe one of the reasons why they're not so smart is because they're not connected to our brains. Maybe if we could hook those devices into our brains, they could have some idea of what our goals are, what our intent is, and what our frustration is. So the idea of interfacing electronics or hardware with the body or brain is not a new one. We've had these prosthetic hooks around for hundreds of years, right? It's like the old pirate hook. And I would claim to you that while this did give some functionality back to individuals, these are not connected to the brain. Now, we saw during the Summer Olympics, Oscar Pistorius did something remarkable. He competed in the Olympics with prosthetic limbs. And he was able to do that because we, bought, we brought more biorealism into those devices. So connecting with biology is very important. But even then, those devices are still not connected to the brain. Now, what about the bionic human, the $6 million man? I grew up watching these kinds of shows when I was a kid. It was very inspiring, right? Now, this is a little bit more along the lines of what I'm talking about. They are connected to the brain. However, tonight, we're thinking about the future. So what's beyond bionics? And the answer to that question is this, symbionics. It's a new word that we're coining here right tonight. And the idea of symbionics is this. Perhaps we could connect devices to the brain that no, didn't just take our commands, but were intelligent, and that they were tuned into our goals, tuned into our intent, and tuned into our errors. And perhaps if they could participate with us in those, we could do much more. Now let me give you an example of what a symbiotic system could potentially do, and this is something that you can all relate to. Think about when you go to the gym and you have your personal trainer. And that personal trainer has some idea of what your goals are. They can help you through those goals. They can help push you to reaching things that you could not do alone. In symbionics, we are also doing that, but we're doing it through the brain. Now, how are we going to get there? I spend a huge part of my day trying to understand the neural code, the millions upon millions of neurons that are in your brain that are firing in synchrony with each other to encode your intent, to encode your goals, to encode what your behavior is. And the way that we do that is that we put very fine microwire electrodes into the brain. These are like the diameter of a human hair. And we can slide these electrodes right up against neurons and we can listen into them. And we can do this from hundreds and hundreds of neurons. And we can create the music of the brain. We can listen into the music of the brain. And if we're very clever with this kinds of technology, we can place electrodes in very interesting parts of the brain. We could put them on the surface of the brain, and we can listen into what somebody's motor intent may be. We can put those electrodes very deep into the core of the brain where your goals and your rewards are represented, and we can listen into those. And we can start to understand how the brain encodes behavior. Now, with all of this, we are not just translating thoughts into actions anymore. If we bring in goals, behaviors and outcomes, and we put them into play in an ongoing way with a user and their device, we can create systems that co-evolve with their users. Okay? This is a revolutionary kind of idea. Okay? So with all of this knowledge, what we're trying to do is build new medical devices, new implantable chips for the body 
that can be encoded or uh, programmed with all of these different aspects. Now you may be wondering, what are we going to do with those chips? Well, the first recipients of these kinds of technologies will be the paralyzed. It would make me so happy by the end of my career if I could help get somebody out of their wheelchair. And one of the remarkable things about going through that mission is that we have something very special and unique here in Miami. We have the Miami Project to Cure Paralysis. And if we take that clinical mission and couple it with technology, use technology to drive the kinds of therapies that we can deliver to these individuals, and then also couple that with the budding startup industry here in Miami, we could get these technologies to the people who need it most. I've traveled all over the world, have never seen anything quite like what we have here in Miami. And one of the things that I would like to share with you tonight is this idea. In early 2013, we are working towards our first human implant of these kinds of technologies. We are trying to restore communication and control to a person with spinal cord injury. And these technologies are gonna encapsulate everything that I've told you here tonight. Electrodes that are on the brain, implantable electronics that are gonna decode all of this information and deliver meaningful control back to that individual. Now, if we can do this and couple symbionics with rehabilitation, we can do something truly transformative. Take a look at this. Let's say we couple the brain with a novel exoskeleton system that that person could control with their thought. We could restore independence to people whose lives have been devastated by a spinal cord injury, for example. I am truly inspired by all of this technology. And the last idea that I would like to share with you tonight, we've been talking a lot about science and technology, but this one is a very deep one, okay? And the way that I would like to express this last idea is through the Shawshank Redemption. Remember that key scene when Andy Dufresne got out of prison, that feeling of liberation that he had? The people that we are trying to help should never be imprisoned by their bodies. And today, we can design technologies that can help liberate them from that. I'm truly inspired by that. It drives me every day when I wake up and get out of bed. Thank you so much.